Okay. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone, and we're going to continue discussing uh, the explanatory model analysis book. Uh, today's chapter is chapter 10, and this is the Keteris Paribus Profiles. Okay, I had to research my my Latin <laughs> uh, to see you know how how the how the phrase was pronounced. So um, the learning objectives, at least from what I gather from this chapter, was uh, to define what is uh, the CP profiles. We're going to use that acronym for the you know for what we're doing. And then we're going to do some visualization and methodology. Then we're going to examine how these CP profiles are used using the Titanic imputed data set. And then we can discuss some of the pros and the cons of this uh, methodology. Uh, so first, let me show you a video of what we're talking about. And this video is more like a, uh, uh, how, the, how this concept is uh, applied to uh, uh, economics, okay? But I think, you know, you're going to find it uh, useful, insightful. Okay, everyone can, everyone can see the video? Yeah, you can see it. Okay. I don't hear any audio if there's any audio. Yeah, you might need to reshare your screen with audio. What was that again? You there's no need... audio. Exactly. There's no audio. There's no audio. Okay, let me see. How can we fix that? You okay. start sharing, Ricardo and go, start sharing in Zoom and go back to share. And maybe mm -hmm. you will see on the bottom left, apps, computer sound. I think that's the ocean. Uh, where is that? So when you click over, share screen again, and you will have all your different tabs. Then in the bottom left, you will see share audio. Ocean. You say bottom left. Oh, before sharing. It's like, oh, before sharing? Yeah, it's like okay. when you are selecting the screen to share. That okay, should... let, let, let me see. Maybe it's that my earphones that are, you know, capturing the, the video and you cannot hear it. Okay, let me see. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, let me let me try this way. No, no, I'll this parabus is Latin for all oh, things. Yeah. Can you hear now? Yeah, we can hear now. Okay, good. Equal. When used in economics or finance, the implication of the term is the same. The effect of one economic variable on another if all other variables remain the same. For example, you could say that the increase in the price of chicken would result, caterus paribus, in less chicken being sold to customers. Of course, that's assuming the price for pork, beef, and lamb haven't increased at the same time and that those prices won't affect demand for those products as well. Let's say that Liz goes to the store to buy some ingredients for southern fried chicken, and when she gets there, the price per pound is much higher than it was the previous week and out of her price range. However, the price of catfish is the same as it was last week. Liz went to the store planning to buy chicken, but she's also fine with having catfish for dinner, so she buys that instead. On the other hand, if Liz gets to the store and the prices of catfish, pork, beef, and lamb have increased as well, Liz will still probably buy chicken for her recipe that evening. Okay, so from the video, what we can see is that that phrase, Cateris paribus, uh, means that uh, 
other things held constant, this is what we expect, uh, you know, uh, a variable to, to affect another variable or all else, all else on change. So this is the concept that we're going to be uh, studying when we are studying these profiles, okay? That show that one variable within our, you know, our, our variable universe, how does it affect the outcome when we kind of hold the other variables uh, fixed for one observation, okay? Um, so let's go to the example in, in the book. This is example is, is, is the part of the intuition uh, section. And uh, again, the CP profile shows the dependence of the conditional expectation of the dependent variable the response on the values of a particular explanatory variable. So we're still in individual you know, uh, uh, or local uh, explanation. So this figure may be in the book. We can see the whole, the whole figure here. So in figure, uh, in panel A of figure 10.1, uh, it presents a 3D visualization where uh, the X is going to be the range of the of the age within the you know the 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 the, the whole the total observations. Then Y is going to be the response, right? Which is going to be here, right? Okay, the response uh, variable. Uh, you know, in terms of the uh, predict prediction uh, probabilities, and then the Z is going to be right here, which is the class of that passenger in the Titanic uh, data set. And the model that we're using here for this uh, profiles is the what is called the L uh, LMR or uh, the, the logistic uh, regression model that we'll discuss, I believe, in chapter four. So one of the things that you can notice, right, is that let's say that we want to get a prediction for a passenger in first class with the age of 47. And that's the what is called the Henry, right? Uh, Henry observation. So what we're going to see is that depending on you know, each of the profiles of the class, we're going to select the profile that, that uh, uh, you know, that corresponds to the first class, right? And then we're going to see this dotted line, I don't know if we can see it, but that dotted line that corresponds to the age of 47. And depending on the intersection of the class and the age, then we're going to get our, you know, uh, predicted pr uh, probability. As you can see, depending on the class, depending on the class, your uh, probability of survival could be higher or could be lower. For example, the crew has a higher uh, profile of survivability than first class or second class or third class. All right. So in panel B, we you know transform that 3D image into a 1D, 1D image where we have our variable of uh, of interest, which is the age, and then how does the profile of that survival curve or response pro uh, probability uh, changes as the classes of, you know, the magnitude of the classes also change. So as you can see, when we start with zero probability, we start, you know, aggregating, you know, by class, we start aggregating until we end uh, with our uh, class of interest, which is the first class. And this is the point where, you know, this, the same thing that has happened here with the point here, this is the point that we get that first class with the age 47, which corresponds to some number here around, let's say around 0 0.3, uh, 3, 1 or 3, 2. Okay. So that's basically the concept of the CP fee profile. Uh, and any comments so far? Yeah. It seems like in the in the class part, yeah. It, rather than the beta plots, here is no aggregate. It's like the difference between the first class. Like when mm -hmm. you see the line, yeah. And then the only group that have a higher probability for that person is a dead crew. The dead crew, correct. 
And you know, that, and that, that, maybe... that's how you see that's how you see like a little bump here. Okay, you know, it doesn't go all monotonic, so you see a little bump, and this is because of the consideration that they correct. Yes, the you, you know, I think that in that part, uh, it's not like because they are independent, you know, mm -hmm. the age, uh, it's like said, if I was so it. It's not even taking consideration in that line. It's just because right. they they add an spin to that logistic regression. It's a logistic regression, but with some flexibility. Mm -hmm. So, but, yeah. but they 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 are right now they are not considering now the the class in that part. It's just keeping the class as first class. That's the curve that they are watching the probabilities. Okay. Yeah, Angel. I, I, if I, I understand not, you correctly, right. are you are you saying there is uh, some sort of interaction effect going on that's that's being picked up in the plot? No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. It's like the yeah. age at that point, like twenty, you know, doesn't make more difference in the the probability between twenty and thirty. So they they create that curve, but that was based on the model, not that any interaction. Mm -hmm. Or mainly direct interaction, you know. And they later explain in the book that when you have correlated situations, maybe you are putting on realistic situations. You know, but that may be not the case for the age, because I think any passenger at any age can be part of most, let's say most of the group, because an uh, engineer group, uh, uh, a boy, you know, cannot be part of the engineering group. But you also have, you also could have that probability, but not here, because we are fixing right. to first class, you know. And you will need to create another person because we are testing Henry, and Henry is from first class, and you are picking age. So be keeping the same, all the parameters of Henry, that's the curve of probability based on age change. Right, right. I, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but from what I understand, like the mechanics uh, of the method, I mean, it, it looks at pretty much all of the other cases. And if there is an interaction effect, like a true interaction effect, I don't mean if you incorporated that in the model, okay. but if it, then then the, 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 the CP profile could potentially be picking that up. And when I see that bump at, at around age 30, I think, well, that maybe, you know, that could be like the, the average age of the deck crew, you know, and that, that could be influencing things a little bit here. But that could be the, the I think that could be the average for the, for the first class. Be, because mm -hmm. that, as I understand, the, the deck crew is not part of that age chart. It's like right. it was a... Um, Con yeah, this, it wasn't this, considered. This is, this is only for first class. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So that bump is occurring when the age is around 30. Mm -hmm. Okay, so apparently uh, in the age 30, in on average, there's a higher probability than if you were a little bit less than, you know, going going to 20 or going to, to 40. Okay? It's, it's like a high high uh, local uh, there, you mm -hmm. know, in that, in that curve. All right, oh, yeah. you guys it, brought up an interesting it, it, point. I just want to make sure we're we're clear on this. So, like, mm -hmm. you're saying the the CP profile is based only on first class instances. I mean, I know we're talking yeah, it, about Henry here, it's, right? It's this one. It's this one. But but my it's understanding was that the CP profiles actually looked at all of the instances to create the CP plot. I, I you know, please keep me honest if if that's incorrect. Um, and and we're kind of early in the in the chapter you're, you're, I mean, you're going to go through it but i i thought i had read that you know it, it's going to extrapolate it's going to look at uh basically all of the cases so so yes we are oh. use, so we are using the instance of henry but like the cp profile itself the, the algorithm right. under the hood is, is kind of utilizing all of the data so like it's going to be influenced by things other than first class from what i again my, that's my understanding but if i'm if i'm wrong <laughs> please please help me out uh yes, cause uh when you uh when you scroll up over there, actually it says in essence the CP profile shows the dependence of the condition expectation. That's the dependent variable. So that means 
we have a class and age, right? So, and then we have a Harley cases. So Harley actually ages 47. So in, mm -hmm. so in them, that means in case of the person whose age is 47, depending on the which class they, he or she belongs to, what's the probability of the survival rate gonna be changed. So you have to looking at the that section, like a slice section mm -hmm. of the of the of the 3D chart, not the kind of a, that that like a curve by itself. Because actually figure B is a, just kind of a, allows us to the helping out to the okay, here is the 47, because of which is our case. And then depending on the maybe if Harry is the deck crew, what's the probability of the survival rate or what about the engineering crew? Because like, which is the high, mostly high the survival rate in the in the in the this case. So that's how we can read about this. So it is actually conditional kind of a probability of the survival with the condition of the class in this case. Okay, because uh, in this plot we only looking at the age and class as a variable. Yeah. Yes. Con yeah, condition uh, uh, to, to, to estimate the probability of the survival rate. Of course, we actually, Haley actually, we already had set up the Haley's cases about the other, all other different kinds of a situation, like uh, where he departed, deported, or something like that. But the thing is, in this case, let's assume that we build up the logistic regression model with uh, these. Two variable yeah, with only as two, a, two yeah, variables, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. as a as a survival rate. And Perfect. then we can actually try to kind of a what if what if kind of a scenario situation, okay? Based on our modeling approaches and then uh, if someone had as if if anyone had the age forty seven and then uh, and then uh, what if he depending on the his class, what's the probability what's the survival rate gonna be changed? With the condition of the that class change, okay, because the age is the age is the fixed in here, so because it's the forty seven, but class is changed, right? In this chart, okay. Yes, the the only the yeah. only predictors here in this model yeah. are age and class. Mm -hmm. You know, we yeah, don't take right. into consideration the other the other predictors. Yeah, because yeah, so uh, yeah, because the CP. When you when we look at the video like uh, that you show, CP mm -hmm. actually shows about the uh, when when something's fixed constant, mm -hmm. what's the change of the outcome, right? Right. So this one is actually shows us about the when the age is fixed, and then depending on the class changes, what's the that age? Uh, what's the person with that age gonna uh? Uh, what what the what is the probability of the survival rate of the person with that age, depending mm -hmm. on the class, and then figure B actually shows us about the actually in the that curve is uh, just kind of showing us about the just kind of a simply age age kind of a or between uh, depending on the changing in the age and the what's the survival rate regardless of the class. But when we pick up the that 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 point like a uh, age forty seven or something, and then we can see the that bar chart on the right about that. Okay, we if we set up the age forty seven, what's the what's the model response uh, in in terms of the change of the survival rate depending on condition by class? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, but, but that, I believe that curve, this curve that we are, you know, discussing, which is the yeah. same here, it's yeah. just a, a 3D curve. This is more yeah. like a flat curve, corresponds yeah. to this uh, class, yeah. first one. That yeah, and also maybe yeah, about the bump, don't get, bump don't, thing. Don't, yeah, don't, don't get, uh, you know, yeah. uh, don't get confused with this. Okay, uh, this is for the first class. All right, are, are, are we in agreement there? Well, my understanding was that I'm, I'm looking at B on the left, right? Mm -hmm. You're yeah. holding all of the variables. I mean, it's a logistic yeah, regression right. model. That's You're holding all of the yeah. other yeah. variables constant uh, oh, that yeah. are 
consistent with what Henry's attributes are. Mm, and then yeah. if Henry, you know, we know he's 47 or, or whatever it is. If right. we assume he were, you know, 60, we get a, a different answer. It's, you know, it's just kind of like yeah. rerunning the model. Is it not? Yeah. It's going to give you a different response. That's what it's, it's, it's going to do. Okay. Yeah. You have to yeah. check the model. Yeah. It's going to give you a different response. But this yeah. corresponds to this graph, which is the first class. Okay. No, okay. no, I, I don't think so, because uh, that is not the first class one, because when you're looking at uh, that 3D plot up there, mm -hmm. actually, that graph is uh, just kind of an average kind of a line of the graph, because uh, we actually have a whole different kind of a slope and curves. Maybe third one is uh, less, less steep, but the thing is, everyone has the same similar kind of a curve pattern. That one actually just kind of uh, showing us about the average line of the curve be between the those things. So actually that graph is uh, just kind of uh, showing us about the kind of a uh, relationship between the uh, survival rate and age when holding all other variables is constant. Right. That's the what you are since, actually, since, yeah, yeah. Okay, Anto, since we only have two variables and age is the one changing, we have to fix yeah. that. And class actually, to... yeah, that's what I'm saying is uh, that curve does not only 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 represents about the first class kind of a curve. That is actually average average line of the of the curve, not only for the first class. When you averaging all of the those things, those those three D plot things together, that's the curve. That's the regression curve is about, right? Is the yeah, average? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You well, know, we are we are different opinions. I think. Different. <laughs> <laughs> this is a healthy discussion, guys. It's, it's helpful yeah. for me. I will say, um, and I, I know we're kind of stuck on the earlier part of the chapter, but <laughs> I didn't think the method um, documentation in the chapter was all that clear. Mm -hmm. I what mean, it was you... it spent a lot of time on the notation, but it wasn't, you know, super clear on what was what was going on. Okay. Right. What, what, what I gather, what I gather mm -hmm. from, you know, reading the chapter is that the concept is that all things are equal. If you change one variable, it's going to have this change in the response, right? Okay. All, all, the, other, the, the other variables equal. So in this case, we have only two predictors, the age and the class. Okay. So if you are studying the change of the response, by the change of age, we have to fix the class. Correct. It's it's, but it's in this case. If I look at that graph on the bottom left, it's not just class that I think is being fixed. It's it's all the other attributes, right, that are consistent with Henry. Well, right. Let let, have... let 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 discard. Let let's try to discard this graph. You know the the one the the, the breakdown plot. Okay. You know, if we don't have if we don't have that one. You will see that the, this profile of first class is basically the same as this one. I, I agree. I, I think it right. looks very okay. similar. I think I think exactly. it's basically the same thing. What yeah. we're, saying, we're saying is if class is first, which is for Henry, okay? This is the curve that when age changes, that's going to be the response is going to be equal to this response in the uh, predicted probability, okay? And that's why we are getting to Henry, which is that dot dot there. But the class is first uh, here. That's what I understand. Okay. Yeah, Igalo, you go up to the third, the three D graph. You see, for example, that we have two dimensions: the horizontal mm -hmm. and the vertical. Right. The class just represents the segment vertical. Mm -hmm. So, as the original point is here, if we go to the second class, we need to down the probability. Correct. And that difference is what we see in the in this part plot. Mm -hmm. And we go, yeah, if we go to the crew, the crew, then you will need to go up. Right. Yeah, but you're going to have a different profile. That's what exactly. I'm... You have a different okay. curve, but you don't see that curve here because that's no. not the purpose of this chart. Correct. You, you are seeing this only this one, the first class uh, profile. Exactly. Okay? And when age yeah. changes, and then the response changes too. 
Right. Your starting point is Henry for all of these, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it's it, and let's and let's note it otherwise. It's all of the all of the attributes yeah. that Henry and has. Henry, for this particular example, Henry has an age of forty-seven, and he yeah. belongs in first class. I'll, okay. I'll I'll be honest. One thing that's still confusing me though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is this hump in the in the graph at around age thirty? As we as we kind of talk through this, because if this is based on output from a logistic regression model, mm -hmm. you know you kind of have this linear linear combination, right? And then you're applying like you're exponentiating it, so it's a monotonic transformation, right? Why would that hump exist? I would think it would be it's like a spin. I think, you know. I, I think it's, it's the response, uh, you know, from 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 age. Okay. I think it was a spin that they applied to that variable, uh, uh -huh. Ricardo. It's like uh -huh. they apply, so I don't remember, in the r 4 introduction to statistical learning, we uh -huh. saw a chart that where you can take a linear model and make it more flexible. Right. Because you see the, the library that they are using is not the base R logistic regression. Uh -huh. So they apply uh, a, yes. a no linear I think you're right. Yes, mm -hmm. there's um like a cubic cubic spline or something like that applied. Is that is LMR? Is that... LMR? You know, is that yes. library? Right. Yes. 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 It's, it's okay. A different... It's a different... Thank you, Angel. I remember that now <laughs> earlier in the book. Um, yeah. Right. It's not. It's not a straight linear um, extrapolation with with age. There is there is some sort of smoothing going on. So you exactly. get exactly mm -hmm. right. Okay. That's that makes a lot more sense. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for uh, uh, making us go on this detour, Ricardo. But uh, this is this has been a healthy discussion. Thank you so much. This, this is what it's all about, you know, trying to discuss, yeah. you know, if we yeah. can, you know, understand, you know, what we're seeing. Okay, so Perfect. let me go. Uh -huh, go ahead. No, I'm good. Let's let's move on. Yeah. Uh, so let me go very quickly <laughs> on the math ma uh, mathematical method. You know, this is the the, the equation. Okay, where the you know the the profile is 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 built. Okay, so uh, you know reading you know the, the the author explanation. You know we have the the f uh, as the model, right? We have the x's which are you know a, a vector of arbitrary values not linked to any particular observation in the data set. Then we have uh, this you know funny uh, <laughs> uh, f funny funny symbol. Okay, which is uh, the the this symbol here? Okay, x to the you know minus j to refer to a vector resulting from removing uh, you know the f element from x. Those are the ones that I understand that are going to be the the equal the the, the equal elements. Okay, and then you know we have the c, which is the observation. Then we transform that to the you know to the profile, and then we get you know. The, the the line that, that we're we're getting. Okay, so let's go then to the example. Let me keep going here. Okay. Um. So in the example, we're going to uh, we're using an imputed data set, and I, I want to make the, that clear. You know that is imputed because in the original Titanic data set, uh, for example, age uh, has some missing values. So this data set, it already took care of that. They don't mention exactly the method that they are, they are using, but you know that's that's what the author you know uh, uh, cho chose to, to do it, and basically for uh, a simplification. So we're going to use the Daleks uh, library, the RMS, and that RMS is where that method is coming, the L LMR method, the logistic regression model. Uh, we have then the random forest, and we're going to uh, uh, compare uh, the random forest with the logistic regression and also the ggplot uh, library. We're going to use the same uh, artifacts that the uh, that the uh, author is using uh, from the archivist. So we're going to be using the Titanic input data set, the LMR model, which is the logistic regression model, the random forest, and then the the observation of uh, of Henry, okay, which is the first class, his male, age forty seven, and so forth. So we're going to build two explainers, okay, corresponding to the logistic regression model and the random forest models. So this is the 
this is the, 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 the function that we're going to use, explain. We get the model. We got the data, okay, which is the Titanic input data minus the, the response variable. Y is going to be the response variable and survive is going to be equal to yes. So we can change it to binary. The label is going to be logistic regression and verbose false. We're going to do a classification model in the LMR because it can do classification regression. And then for the random forest model, we're going to do the same operation for explain. Okay, so now that we have all these uh, explainers objects, what we're going to do is create our CP profiles with that observation. Because remember, this is local, this is not global, this is local. So we get first the profile with this function, predict profile, explainer equal to the explainer of the model, from the model, and then the new observation is going to be, we call it, you know, uh, Dearly, we call it here. The same thing for the research model. We're going to set the theme for theme Emma, which is the author's a theme that is used in the in the book. And then we're going to uh, construct different plots. This one is for age, right? You know, if age changes and everything is the same, everything is 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 on chain. How does that you know? Uh, how does that affect the probability, uh, the predictive probability for both models. And then also we're going to do another profile, but for the class. So everything is unchanged on the rest of the variables except the class. So we have now two, uh, we're going to have four really profiles, two by age for this, for every model and two for class for each model. All right. So let's see. In the first one, this is the, uh, the CP profile for the age. And we already have seen it in the example that we did, but that example only had two uh, predictors, okay? It had the age and the class. Here, we have uh, more predictors here. We have the, you know, the, the siblings, the, 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 the family composition, uh, departure, et cetera, fair, and all that. So everything equal, these are the profiles for the logistic regression model. And we see that bump again. <laughs> and then the CP profile for the Titanic, for the, for the random forest uh, model. And as you can see, both models have different responses to the prediction probability. So for example, linear, the linear regression model uh, has a probability for Henry of 40.3, okay? Corresponding to this, you know, to this uh, line, right? Okay, to this uh, uh, line. Then in the random forest is much lower. It's around 0 0.246, okay? Uh, any comments there? Uh I guess this shouldn't be surprising that the random forest CP plot is uh, not quite as smooth, right? Because linear regression, sorry, logistic regression and other linear models are going to be forced to, to be that way. Mm -hmm. um, so so things are, are pretty <clears throat> pretty chunky. Uh, kind of, I think the, the book describes it as like a step-like fashion, how the, the predictions work. Right. Yeah, it, ha it has a little bit more zigzags here, okay? you know, in the random forest, and it's expected that, uh, because mm -hmm. what it's doing is kind of, you know, dividing the space into, you know, a small, small spaces. And that's where you get the, you know, the prediction from those, yep. uh, you know, little re rectangles in a space uh, uh, model. Okay. You know, yep. I it, and, it, uh, and it still really... picked up the, 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 um, the hump at around age 30. Mm -hmm. um, but there's another little hump, uh, Right. right after age 40 mm -hmm. but before age 47 mm -hmm. and the uh logistic regression did not pick up on that so right. Right. it so who knows if that's you know noise or if that's a true signal um in this case but that, i i think that's that's the real thing that i'm i'm noticing and of course you know things kind of drop off a cliff on the <laughs> uh, random forest once you hit around a little a little under 60 right 
Uh, uh, Angel, you had a comment there. No, no, I was commenting the same, yeah. Right. Okay, okay. So uh, we see that definitely the models have different responses, uh, you know, for the same progression of, of age. What about the classes? Okay. Uh, okay, this is the, you know, the, 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 the uh, breakdown plot you know, for the classes, uh, you know, for, for the, for the age uh, prediction. Okay. Uh, which is, you know, really cla cla the, the first class, but then we have another one and this one is very interesting. Okay. And this is the CP for, uh, the random, the random forest, right? Let me see if I have it right. The CP for the random forest, uh, considering, uh, you know, the class, the, the 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 object that we that we that we said that you know the class considering the other uh, variables. Okay, so we're trying kind of fixing the class, but then uh, doing a CP for age, another one for fair, another one for parch, and another one park, another one for uh, CIB, uh, SP, which are the continuous uh, variables in our data set. And this one is kind of interesting. Uh, what 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 do you think is happening here? Uh, to me, in all cases, yeah, they are keeping all the other variables uh, fit and just changing one. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, we see the same age, and the se and the fair also have interesting shape in a U shape. So you it's very you pay me a lot of money of uh oh, 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 <laughs> a cheap right a cheap fair the the part I don't know was was that me but you know it like to see a low effect that mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what was right. your fair but the the ships I don't know what's that but it have a use so you should be yeah. It, the, yeah, it's the, it's, the, it's the number. I I believe it's the number of siblings. Okay. Oh. You know, in other words, the family. That, that so is you go alone. Yeah, you have more probability to to don't survive. That that's in, interesting. That's very interesting. <clears throat> that one, that one uh, in, in the last, you know, the, the the last plot to the right. Okay, mm -hmm. that you see that big jump in prediction probability or survival probability, you know, between zero and then even you know less than one, probably one or two, whatever. Okay. I, yeah, I think this is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you know, a, a good example where you need to be cautious with these, uh, uh -huh. these plots. Right. Uh, I'm thinking of like the, the fair plot in general. Yes, it, it looks like if you're paying a lot more, you know, to your point, Ricardo, maybe that's indicative mm -hmm. of a family. But at the same right. time, we're holding all of the other attributes um, constant. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, for, for folks that were paying a lot in fair, like that, that person may not look like Henry, assuming that's who we're looking at here. Yes. Um, yes. you know, so, so there's some extrapolation that's going on that, that may not be consistent. I, th I think you or Angel may kind of made that comment earlier. It's, it's like, um, <clears throat> these, these profiles probably make more sense in the local neighborhood of the instance that mm -hmm. we're examining, but as you get Correct. you know, farther and farther away from there, you, you can't really take this as, um, you know, gospel, like this is, you know, um, mm -hmm. indicative of what would really happen. <clears throat> Yeah, and, and 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 to your point, you know, you have you have a good direction, because we're studying this, uh, you know, Cateris uh, Paribus profiles, CB profiles, yep. because eventually we're going to study something called partial dependence plots, okay? And the partial mm -hmm. dependence plots is a collection of CB profiles, <clears throat> okay? Mm -hmm. So instead of just uh, taking one observation, we're going to take let's say a hundred or two hundred observations, depending on our uh, uh, data set, you know, uh, observations. And then we can see more or less, you know, how is it moving, you know, according to the observations and what is the average CB profile that we can collect. So, but you're right, you know, this is a, just one observation, but it's kind of curious that that particular uh, factor uh, really stands out, okay? The, the mm -hmm. CIP, the, the you CIP know, really stands out. I, I like because the siblings, because that's something that Henry could have changed, you know. He you say, hey, I ended up telling, what can you do to increase your probability to survive? Hey, 
bring your family with you. <laughs> invite the whole family with you, exactly, yeah. It's a, that's the, because he cannot change his age. Right. He might right. can change the, the fare he pay, but what he can really do to increase <laughs> the probability is to bring the, his family. Yeah, bring your cousins and, you know, and stuff around, yeah. <laughs> and also, actually, these four plot in general overall actually shows us about the how how our Titanic data is very complicated because, for example, like uh, in case of the siblings and parts, there is a de definitely has a jump up kind of pattern, especially when we looking at the sibling, right? Right. Like right. if you bring bring your family, <laughs> that survival rate is just kind of a jumping up. So that means maybe if we thinking about the, this one as a categorical variable, like a zero or non-zero kind of kind of Categorization gonna be help us to the very key in terms of the decision tree kind of thing, random forest kind of things. That one is the one of the key branching out factors that we allows us to the estimate the survival rate more accurately. But the thing is, when we looking at the fair and age as a continuous variable, mm -hmm. those are the actually exactly shows us about the kind of a depending on the changing of the age or fares was the survival rate being changed continuously, like uh, more variations. Mm -hmm. That means age and fair is the more like a, uh, easy to figure out when we try to conducting the maybe logistic regression model. Right, but, right. But parts and sibling is a more suitable to, to get the more accuracy of the survival rate for the random forest. So mm -hmm. that means this one, these two, these four plus also show us about the, how complicated it is to estimate the survival rate because age and fair as a continuous variable is the more suitable, uh, suitable for the uh, more play, uh, play, a uh, made uh, play a significant role to predicting the survival rate when we conducting the logistic regression. But parts and sibling is the more more suitable for the random forest kind of model because of the, those kind of jump up kind of pattern. Yeah, uh, at least the random yeah. forest is detecting, at least in the same is detecting a, you know, yeah. high probability jump from zero. Yeah, actually, actually that fair kind of curve, like a U curve is actually one of the, U curve actually shows, uh, shows uh, the very typical curve of the survival curve, actually, when we try to do the logistic or logic regression model for the survival data analysis, that curve is the what what we what we uh we identifying the most. Whenever we do the those kind of analysis, that U curve is uh, what we always mostly got, depending on the that kind of continuous variable. So that's the reason why the the two two plus on the left is the more suitable for the regression based kind of a prediction approaches. The two plot on the right is the more suitable for more if key uh low into the conducting to more suitable for the those care classification kind of approaches like a random forest or decision tree, etc. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I found when I looking at the, this this plot. So Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Okay. So we have the pros and the cons, right? And uh, I, I try to, you know, to do the <laughs> uh, angel. Angel in chapter eight, you have the table. Okay. So probably, you know, we can add this, you know, to that to that table, you know, to make kind of a, a comparison between each of the models that we are we're doing. Uh, but I stated it the same way as the author is do, doing. So one of the pros is that this usually is easy to understand and communicate visually, especially the one dimension uh, CP profile. Uh, the 3D uh, plot is kind of, you know, it's kind of confusing sometimes, okay? Especially, I don't know, you know, for, for me, I prefer more, you know, uh, two dimension uh, uh, graphs, okay? And I think in one of the, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the way that we should transmit visually, uh, sometimes, you know, 3D gets a little bit confusing. Anyway, and it is, it is possible to show, like we 
did now is supposed to show profiles for many variables or models in a single plot. Okay, like you know we're discussing here. What are the cons? Well, some of the cons we have seen it already. Also with uh, with the breakdown plots is that uh, the presence of correlated explanatory variables may lead to unrealistic and misleading results. And we have seen this in the interaction in this data set between class and fair, right? Uh, you know, in the CP profile, because we're just uh, honing into only one variable that is changing, you know, the magnitude or changing the label in a, in a categorical variable, uh, that presence of that correlation uh, could uh, uh, lead to misleading results. And it's not that practical in case of a model with hundreds of thousands of variables. I mean, you're going to have a lot of uh, graphs out there and it's going to be hard you know, to distinguish between uh, each of them, okay? And then I put some references, okay? So this is the reference for the video that, we, uh, that, that I show you. And then this is another one, which is uh, taken from the Advanced Data Science in R, which also explains with another data set explains uh, how to use uh, these uh, CP, CP profiles. Okay, and basically that's it. Oh, no, great, thanks, Ricardo. Yeah, I, I really like this, this chart. Uh, I think this method is really useful and really intuitive oh. to, to explain because it's, even though you, you might not like, you know, the the tools of the of the authors, it's really easy to to do it by yourself. You just need to predict a, a sequence, okay. you know, or create your own data frame and then plot it. Mm -hmm. After you you yeah. made your predictions, it's not yeah. like yeah. Go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, it's not like you you have a specific method. It's just taking an observation and creating more rows, changing that that value across that and made, and then exactly. made the plot with the with the predictions. Yeah, and, and we're going to see that in the, what is called the PDP plot, the partial uh, dependence uh, plot, where you have a lot of observations and you see the fluctuation of that curve, okay? Up and down, up and down, until you get kind of a, 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 an average of what that curve you know, should be. Okay, so let's put stop here.